Good morning, church. God is good. And all the time. Yes, God is wonderful. He is a wonderful God because he grants us this privilege to be here in his temple, to give him the glory and the honor that only he deserves. I want to thank God first for choosing me to share his word with you. I also want to thank the church pastor and the board members for allowing me to use their pulpit to speak to you on this Sabbath morning. A special thank you to my Uncle Johnny and Tati Myatt, who trusted me to deliver today's sermon. I also want to thank my mom, my dad, my little brother Ethan, and my cousins Kayla and Sean for their loving support. I'm asking you all to pray for me while I deliver the word of God to you this morning. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for the wonderful Sabbath that you have created for us. We were able to come to church and give you the honor and glory that only you deserve. Please bless each one of us that are here today. Be with me while I'll deliver your message. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The title of my sermon today is The Unlimited Love of God. Let us read 1 Samuel 12, verse 19 to 25. And it reads, The people all said to Samuel, Pray to the Lord your God for your servants so that we will not die. For we have added to all our other sins the evil of asking for a king. Do not be afraid, Samuel replied. You have done all this evil, yet do not turn away from the Lord, but serve the Lord with all your heart. Do not turn away after useless idols. They can do you no good, nor can they rescue you, because they are useless. For the sake of his great name, the Lord will, reject, will not reject his people, because the Lord was pleased to make you his own. As for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you, and I will teach you the way that is good and right. But be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. Consider what great things he has done for you. Yet, if you persist in doing evil, both you and your king will perish. Church, you know, if there is one thing that defines how God feels towards humanity, it's his unlimited love. And I'm so glad to know that love of God. I'm so glad to know that his love for us is not based upon of what we do or how we do it. God's love is solely based upon his power to love and nothing else. Let me tell you something. We cannot lose the love of God because after all, God loved us long before we even knew who he was. It was God who came looking for us, his lost sheep. Romans 5 verse 8 reads, But God commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. It was God that decided he wanted to have a personal relationship with man whom he had created. It is God who chases after us, seeks us, and tries to reach out to us. Our attitude toward God has nothing to do whatsoever with whether God loves us or not. The book of James tells us in chapter 1, verses 17 to 18, that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will he begat he us, with the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. This simply means that the love of God is God's perfect and good gift to all men and women everywhere, whether they are saved and living for him or not. It is God's perfect and unchanging and unending love 
that reached out to you and I, while we were yet sinners and had not given God a single thought. We were running as wild sheep when God came hunting for us and called us by name and said, it's time to come home now. Aren't you glad for God's love, God's mercy, and God's grace? I am so glad that God's love for me doesn't change. His grace is always the same. The book of Psalms says over and over again, his mercy endure forever. His mercy endure forever. His mercy endure forever. I'm so glad that my God is an unchanging God. He is Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And because he is an unchanging God, I can always count on his great love, his mercy, and his grace even when I'm rebellious against him and trampling his love into the dust and running with all my might from his perfect will for my life and chasing after the things of the world and caught up in the cares of this life and his love is still there. Truth enough, we can lose God's favor by running from him. He can lift his hand of blessings from our life. We can lose that closeness in our relationship with him. We can suddenly realize, like the prodigal son, that we have fell in a hog pen of sin and shame. But no matter how far we may have gone, we should be so glad that we can always turn back towards home and know that God still loves us and his greatest desire is to see his wayward sheep come home. Let me give you a little story of how much God loves you. All of you who have been in church for any time will remember the story of how God delivered Israel out of the land of Egypt and destroyed the armies of Pharaoh in the Red Sea. Israel had failed God terribly and fallen into idolatry. As a result, they were slaves for 400 long years. Generations passed without deliverance, but there came a day when God's love caused him to stop judgment for sin against his people. With a mighty hand, God brought them out. Seven terrible plagues had utterly destroyed the economy of Egypt and God had brought the most powerful king on the face of the earth at that time to his knees. God wanted to be Israel's God. He wanted them to follow him. So he put a pillar of fire representative of the fire of the Holy Ghost that leads us in the darkest hours of our lives. When it seems that the world has closed around us, and we can't see the light of day, that pillar of fire still leads us. Through the leading and the power of the Holy Ghost, and by his power, we are led from victory to victory, from dark valley through dark valley, until we can open our eyes and see the glory of God shining in us. Then he placed a pillar of clouds by day, to lead his people on their journey through the wilderness to their promised land. The pillar of clouds represents his word as revealed by the Holy Spirit to each of us. God's word is easily seen and understood as it teaches us, leads us, washes us, and brings us ever closer to our journey through life. The Holy Ghost is always there leading us by day and by night. The word of God is always there as a lamp unto our feet and a, a light unto our path. And God's great love ever watches over us as we walk in the light that he has given to us. Listen, church, we don't all walk the same part of the path or at the same pace. Some of us 
may walk in a little different way than others. Why is that so? The reason is that God decides what he wants to reveal to you through his word, and he knows what you will receive. So he reveals to each of us according to his sovereign will. Then he had shown us and the path that he has set before us. For some, that path has gone for a lifetime now. For others, your path is shorter and you may not have traveled as far than others. But there is a lot of paths yet to light. There is much more to learn about God's word. The more you know of God's word and the longer you walk with the Lord, the straighter your path must become. Because God's way is a straight and narrow way, or we will miss the gate into heaven. Israel had begun their journey toward the promised land with only God's chosen prophet, the pillar of fire and the pillar of clouds as their guide. They were being led by God, not by the will of a man. Moses never took step without seeking the face of God. Sure, sure, Moses made mistakes, but Moses never, and I mean never ever, presumed to take the leadership away from God and make himself into a king over Israel. Then we find in the book of 1 Samuel that Israel decides they would rather have a king then follow God's leading. What a slap in the face of God. It was though they went to God and said, your leadership isn't good enough. We would rather have a man lead us, someone that we can see and talk like anyone else. You're just too hard to speak to and to follow. My friends, let me tell you that when you develop that kind of attitude, you're in big trouble. That's the kind of attitude that causes men and women to follow a man who takes the place of Jesus in their lives. And then we wind up losing out with God completely. But oh, God still loves them. But sadly, they don't love God. And then God's judgment must take over and he must apply his love by using the rod of correction instead of the gentle guiding hand of mercy. Church, you better not put your trust in a man or let any man determine what is the will of God for your life. Your trust must be in the Lord Jesus Christ. You must follow the Holy Ghost and obey the word of God. Don't ever get your eyes off the pillar of fire and the pillar of clouds. Put your soul in the hands of the master, Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Israel chose Saul as their king. He was, according to 1 Samuel chapter 19, verse 2, a choice young man and godly. And there was not among the children of Israel a godlier man than he was. From his shoulders and upward, he was higher than any of the people. Saul had all the appearances of being the right man for the job as a king of Israel. He was good looking, handsome, well built, and tall, and he had a humble attitude. But on the outside, he just looked like a king. The problem was, no matter how godly Saul looked, he was still a sinful man. He was not God. Can you see the problem here? I was told a story about a church that was chosen by God and with a God-chosen man as its leader. But that first leader died, like Moses did with Israel. And soon, the whole nature of the church began to change. Those people who knew and heard the mind of God 
and who kept their eyes on Jesus began to leave until only a few were sadly left. But those who were left put their eyes on a man. I'm sure he started out as a godly man who looked good, dressed good, acted good, and maybe even preached good. But he was just a man, not God. And soon that sinful nature began to take hold. The church was led down the wrong path. The pillar of fire was gone. The pillar of clouds was gone. And that spirit has departed across the doors. But the people didn't even notice. Look where they are today. How far have they fallen from following the God of love, mercy, and grace to worshiping the devil with animal sacrifices? That's where following a man will take you. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Does God so love those people in that church? Yes, of course he does. God still desires to see every one of them saved. But that doesn't mean that God can't save them or doesn't desire to. God still loves them. God is still reaching out to them. God's grace and mercy is still extended to them. But for now, God's rod of correction is doing its work to get them turned around if they will. For now, they have lost the blessings of God. For now, they have lost their fellowship with God. For now, they have lost their favor with God. And unless they repent and turn back, they will never enter heaven's gate because they have left that straight and narrow way. It, but is this... Worship the devil or abuse children. Those are heinous and terrible sins. But they are no worse in the sight of God. They're refusing to obey his word in any other way. It's no worse than lying. It's no worse than cheating. It's no worse than cursing. It's no worse than dishonoring our body with alcohol, drugs, immorality, tobacco, or some other destructive force. It's no worse than putting the things of this world above, our, above serving the Lord in the house of God. Sin is sin in the sight of God. Our hatred isn't the same as God's hatred for sin. He hates all sin, and all sin is the same to him. But we, we hate some sin, dislike other sin, tolerate some sin, and enjoy other sins. We are changeable, and with our feelings in a of one minute and hate the next, but God is an unchanging God. The people of Israel didn't know how far they had fallen from God's blessings and favor until the prophet Samuel reminded them. Even though God allowed Saul to become king, told Samuel to anoint Saul as king, and then change Saul's heart so that he could lead the nation, God was not pleased with Israel's rejection of God's own leadership and chosen a man instead. It was still sin in the eyes of God, but the love of God was still just as strong towards Israel. And so, God was going to let them what they want, but still do all he could to teach them to serve him anyway. With sadness, God allowed Israel to have what they wanted. He didn't refuse their heart's desires, even though in this case, he knew it was not the best thing for them. Yet, God's love would not forsake them. Samuel revealed God's displeasure against the people of Israel. When they heard the words of Samuel, 
Israel has, was finally shaken into the reality of the great sin they had committed against God. They were shocked by how far from God they had gone. And then they came to Samuel seeking God's forgiveness. And now we are back to 1 Samuel 12, verse 19 to 25. And it reads, And all the people said unto Samuel, Pray for thy servants unto the Lord thy God, that we die not. For we have added unto all our other sins the evil of asking for a king. And Samuel said unto the people, Fear not, ye have done all ye wickedness, but ye turn aside from following the Lord. But serve the Lord with all your heart, but turn ye aside, for then ye should go after vain things, which cannot profit nor deliver, for they are vain. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great namesake, because it hath pleased the Lord to make you his people. Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, but I will teach you the good and right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him truth with all your heart, for consider what great things he hath done for you. But if ye shall still do wickedly, ye shall be consumed, both ye and your king. What a great God! What a loving Father! What a merciful God is our God. No matter how many times we fail him, he still wants to be our God. No matter how often we stumble and fall, he still desires to pick us up and let us start over again. When I think of all the wickedness that is in me and in all of us, I am so thankful for the love of God that is so unlimited. When you place your trust in the riches of this world that cannot deliver and turn away from God, he still loves you. When you have forsaken him days without number to chase after the pleasures of the sin of this world that can only condemn you to eternal death, he still loves you. When you have failed to love him, he still loves you. When you have abused the body that is supposed to be the temple of the Holy Ghost, he still loves you. How can you not love him in return? How can you turn your back to him? How can mankind spurn the love of God and continue to run the other way? There's no question that God loves each of us today. There's no question that his mercy and grace is reaching out to us right now. There's no question that God has called us, chosen us, lifted us from the life of sin that we once lived. There's no question that God wants to bless you right now. The question is simply this. Even though God loves you, that doesn't mean that you resting in his blessings, receiving in his favor in your life, or that you have a close relationship with him? So, how do you stand in these points with God? Do you sense the presence of God in your everyday life? Or have you allowed the relationship to slip away quietly until you cannot see that pillar of fire and the pillar of clouds? Do you have the blessings of God upon your home, your family, your finances, your job, and everything in your life? Or is your life nothing but trouble, struggles, doubts, and fear? Do you have the favor of God in your life? Can you sense him looking down on you right now, knowing how you have acted this week, knowing what you have said this week, knowing all you have done this week, and still he smiles at you in approval? God's love is unchanging. He loves you, but do you have his blessings and favor? Samuel's words to Israel are appropriate for us today. For the Lord will not forsake his people for his great namesake, 
because it hath pleased the Lord to make you his people. God won't forsake you when you fail him. God doesn't move at all. It's us that runs from him. It's God's great pleasure to call you his son or daughter. It's God's great love to keep his eyes on you no matter where you go. And for his own name's sake, he wants to bring you home. Samuel also said this, Moreover, as for me, God forbid that I should, that I should sin against the Lord and cease to pray for you. But I will teach you the good and the right way. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he hath done for you. No matter where you go or what you do, God will not cease to think of you. Samuel closed this passage of scripture with an aftershot of warning to both Israel and Saul. God loved them. God would forgive them. God would pour out his blessings upon them, even though they had been rebellious, but God also had a warning for them. But if ye shall still do wickedly, ye shall be consumed, both ye and your king. God will only let us stay rebellion for a while. The time will come when he will say, enough is enough. His love will remain the same, but his blessings will cease and his favor will be lifted. And then the rod of correction must come to drive us back on our knees before him again in repentance. Do you have God's favor and blessing? I know you have his love, but are you allowing God to lead you? Let's check ourselves today and see whether we have the favor and the blessings of God or not. My prayer for you today is to allow God's blessings to pour over your life. Amen. Amen. Say this prayer for me as we end this sermon. God, I'm ready for your blessings. I'm ready to let you lead me and guide me to the right path that you have for me. Grant me the privilege to be your faithful servant, for I know the plans you have for me, plans to prosper me and not to harm me, plans to give me a hope and a great future. God, I'm ready to receive your blessings. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. 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 Happy Sabbath.
the beautiful city of God that those refuse to sing who never knew our God the children of the heavenly but children of the heavenly king may speak their joys abroad may speak their joys abroad we're marching to zion beautiful beautiful zion we're marching upward to zion the beautiful city of god hill of zion yields a thousand sacred sweets before we reach the heavenly fields before we reach the heavenly fields Walk the golden streets, or walk the golden streets. We're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God. Then let our songs abound and every tear be dry. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground. We're marching through Emmanuel's ground to fairer worlds on high, to fairer worlds on high. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching upward to Zion, the beautiful city of God.